Hey, are you a tech professional searching for a new company to share your tech skills with? Well, check out Hired. Hired connects talent with top tech companies. On Hired, software engineers and designers can get five or more requests for interviews in a week. And they work with 2,500 companies from startups to large public companies and employers from 12 major tech hubs in North America and Europe. So you're bound to find the right position for you. If you use our special link, that's Hired.com slash The 404 Show. When you sign up, they'll double that bonus you get when you accept a job. That's right. Double the bonus. $2,000 thank you bonus gets doubled when you go to Hired.com slash The 404 Show and get a job. Hello and welcome to another fantastic, I'm calling it at the top of the show, fantastic We don't episode. even know, it might be really bad. It's very possible we'll fall off the rails and, you know, derail and go nuts. I don't know, it's not going to happen though because today is Friday, November 6th, 2015. It's 90 degrees outside. It's really and I wanna, warm. I wanna, I, who, this is not November weather. It's not November no. weather. If there's only, if there's one person that can fix the weather. Cloverfield monster. It's you, Russ Frushdick. Oh. I probably could. Let if me see what I'm I can elected do. president, I will tell winter and fall to act appropriately. Or, uh, no, era, era. No above 80 degrees. Don't you think somebody should really troll uh, Donald Trump and be like, Mr. Trump, what do you plan on doing to fall, to whip it into shape? So that it displays there, the correct temperature. Well, what's great is that I know for sure he would answer that question. Look, we have a great we have a great set of uh, seasons here. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take fall, we're gonna put fall, and we're gonna put it in a bathtub. We're gonna put it behind a wall. It won't bother us anymore. You know, it's the troublemaking season. We just don't want any part of it. I will dig deep into Fall's past. I will find out all of Fall's secrets. <laughs> and when I do and I expose Fall for the piece of shit season it truly is, I will then uh, have it in a situation where it has to act like it's correct season. I don't, I don't mind Fall. Can you say something? Can you say something for a second? And I know I'll be brief. I'll be brief. I promise you I'll be brief with this. But Fall needs to play ball. Okay? Whoa. And I didn't mean to rhyme there, but life has it's its little bonuses. Great for a, a bumper sticker. Fall... Needs to play ball. Make those shirts. Yeah, that's it. How do you like that? You like my Trump impression? Oh, it's, it's not bad. It is on the verge of being someone. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's based off that guy from who does it from the UCB. Oh, I haven't seen that. It's spectacular. He's a little mumbly. He's ama- He's amazing. Yeah. He doesn't. I don't think anyone does it better than him. Yeah. Uh, his name is Anthony something. It escapes okay. me. Good. Good. Giving him credit. I'm sure he deserves it. He does. Man. I don't have any problem with fall. It's the winter that is a downer and bugs me. What, uh, do you you like winter? You're okay with winter? I mean... You ski. Is that even, the only reason? Winter's the best. There's oh, because of the ice skating as well. But you... I it, Nothing is better yeah. than being cold when you sleep. Yeah, but you could be cold with air conditioning. I'm not... I'm looking for an all-natural okay. solution to sure. my sleeping. I need to be cold. Yeah. You know, the only thing about fall that really is the downer is the loss of the hour of light. Who it's can't? Dark. What are you? It's what dark you, at four o'clock. What are you, a flower? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? It's a downer. First it's of all, sad. Daylight savings Seasonal, is bullshit. Whatever. And I don't want to go on a rant here. I agree that it's crap. It's bullshit. It yeah. like it actually has an awful impact on on human life. What's the worst part? Uh, pe- that that it can actually make you like depressed. That's what I was just saying, and you ignored it. I'm just saying you we shouldn't it was, do it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's crap. Yeah, and, and I'm and, bothered and, and that's, like, that I think, getting dark early is part of that. I think the day they do it, there's like a 10% spike in traffic accidents. And probably suicide. I don't, I don't know if we go that far. Well, what is it? Sweden or one of those countries has like a really high suicide rate because they only get like an hour of daylight during the winter. Yeah, but they just they do it better than we do, even if they're all killing they each do, other. They do killing suicide themselves. better? They yeah. do it all better. More effectively. So apparently... Uh, Sweden does suicide better, and Japan does Star Wars trailers better. I wouldn't know, but I'll take your word for it. I, I still haven't watched so it. This is very weird. Uh, this morning, I'm on Twitter, and there's all these, all this trending is like Jap- Japan Star Wars. Yeah, and I'm like, what the? F- what is that? Like, what? what what's going on? Yeah. So apparently, 
a, a regional exclusive trailer yes. to Japan. International trailer, but only Japan. Well, the it's got Japanese subtitles. Okay, it's not dubbed. It's not dubbed. It's got all it. in English. Got it. And they do a, a, a relatively different trailer than the theatrical one that we all saw, what was that, last week? Yeah. yeah I mean, I didn't it's see it. It's very yeah. different. It's very different. And they show different scenes. Do they say Chewbacca-san? No, that's that's borderline insensitive. I don't think it is. <laughs> it's Mr. Chewbacca. That's what that means. Chewbacca-san. Is that what a salary man Han Solo? <laughs> <laughs> If it's offensive, I'm sorry, but I it wasn't. I don't think it is. We're just having fun. Um, but like, I don't. It's crazy, right? Like, it's, uh, it, you, it's I, weird that they generally they'll do like a big for a big ten poll like this. They'll do the U.S. release of the trailer. They'll do an international trailer, but yeah. the international trailer will have like one or two like different shots or something like that. But for it to be dramatically different, which is what you're saying, it is as far as I can tell. And I only watched the first one that came out twice because I'm just okay. not that much of a crazy person sure uh and i just watched this one it's a little shorter but yeah. it's it's very different there's one scene where like kylo ren no no t- no 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 stop stop so do we talk about theories what i do we talk about who i think kylo ren is no we did not talk about that can we do that is it based on any like interview no. this is just your brain this is just jeff okay go for it i think kylo ren jar jar is, binks. is jar jar binks reincarcerate <laughs> no i think kylo ren yeah is either Darth Vader's clone? Okay, sure, lame, but well, okay. That's not. That's v- well within the. There are there is cloning. That's there's true. cloning, and is, it keeps it in the family. Yes, I think like, and he yeah. kind of looks like he's gangly, like Luke Skywalker. Right. Okay. Maybe they. Maybe like Luke has a weird brother. Maybe he's his brother. Well, he would be all sort no, of no, he's in not a way. His brother. He would. I mean, if they're it would cloned. be his dad. Yeah, be a clone, a clone of, his, of dad. his dad. Right. This is like some Metal Gear shit right here. Um, I never want to enter that realm <laughs> of Metal Gear. Is shit. there anything else that you're basing that on? No, this is all speculation. Okay. I want to say I also read someone propose something similar online. Okay. Uh, there was a big theory I read about Jar Jar Binks being a Sith Lord. That's a parody, but it was like a well researched theory. Yeah, <laughs> and you can and the, yeah, ugh, come on, I hate I hate that stuff i don't think they were being wholly serious but they did i like it when it's points. a joke i yeah. hate when they're trying to be serious yeah i understand. like oh, back to the future predicted 9 11 like <laughs> shit like that uh yeah so i don't know it's fun to have uh, your own fan theory though yeah so this trailer uh go check it out if you don't know what we're talking about um it's very it's very good there's yeah there's, yeah i'm in Am it I, I, i'm in it to win it I i'm sorry see this that movie. i won't watch the trailer i don't care I, feel, I do feel bad that i can't have a substantive discussion it's but fine i feel like you just did a really good job researching <laughs> george lucas has said that he wants to see nothing of the new movie because it'll be the first time he experiences a star wars movie like anyone else right and it'll be better than anything he ever did do you think he can acknowledge personally no. like this is so much better than what, anything that i could do I'm making again a very uh, premature judgment. Yeah, but I I feel like I know I'm gonna like Episode Seven. I think I will more than any of them, even like Empire, which he One didn't through write six. or direct. Right, I'm gonna. I know okay. I'm gonna. Well, I could I just th- tell. It would certainly be more modern and more like a pr- more fitting of modern tastes in terms of movies. I just think I don't know. I think they're doing it right. Uh, speaking of Star Wars, uh, there is a scene at tech tie-in here oh boy uh if you uh have been to a newsstand in the last uh couple of days you will notice that um mr is it john boyega john boyega he is on the cover actor. of cnet magazine i saw that uh this as a stormtrooper as a stormtrooper like a t-shirt of stormtrooper you so you don't even know his deal because you've seen nothing i mean all i've seen so, was, I, so for what it's worth i saw the very first trailer and instantly regretted it just because I got excited and I didn't wish I hadn't seen anything. But there is a shot of him in a Stormtrooper outfit, like in the very first, like the yeah, first with, shot. With the, of the, with the helmet trailer. off. Right. Anyway, and it's clear it's clear that he like defects or something happens. But uh, yeah, pretty rad that we got him on the cover of CNET Magazine. Very cool. And there's actually, good get. it is a good get. There's a variant oh. uh, version of the cover as well. There's one in white and one in black. And yeah. It's very cool. Uh, go check it out. It's really good stuff. Talking to John Boyega about his role as Finn 
in no, The Force that's Awakens. That's too much information. I can't tell you what his name is. Now his name's Finn. Finn. Two is he going to paint a fence? Is he going to ride on a raft? Uh, Who knows? What is that? The Huckleberry Finn reference. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate. Mm. It used to be okay, you and me. I know. What is, you, what's happened? It used to be all right. <laughs> um, all right. So there it is. Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Japanese trailer, international trailer. Go check it out for yourself and let us know what you think. Um, we, we, oh, wait. Hold on. Put on your hat, Russ. Put on your, your business hat. Here okay. you go. Take it. Thank you. you. Got your business hat. I mean, you are a Fox Business veteran, are you not? Uh, yes. <laughs> what, tell, tell the people what you do sometimes. Uh, I've been on Fox Business a lot you go on like weekly yeah i've probably been on about 60 or 70 times okay so that's a lot (laughs) that's a lot um and uh a big business thing in the tech world happened yesterday it's true activision yes bought king digital yes the makers of candy crush big game for 5.9 billion dollars yeah with a b now uh we talked a bit about this on the beast cast as well this week but uh what what so now what's your knee jerk reaction because you know you there's been a lot of acquisitions with in the mobile space yes zynga had that like year when they're like we got to buy everybody, buy everybody and yeah. it kind of didn't work out for them i guess yeah. in the long run sure but activision mm-hmm. blizzard yep. is a massive uh company that's having a great year yep king digital actually not so much they're nope. st- they're they they've been not tanking but sure. they haven't been in the in in the in the best of financial situations as of late yeah they they get acquired for i believe and i'm just trying to remember i believe it was 20% below their ipo i think it was a premium actually of where their stock price was i think it was a 20% premium on of- top of the ipo I thought it was their initial offering. They were getting twenty percent below it. I don't know. Maybe we researched this or something. But <laughs> either way, uh, the takeaway is that King hasn't been doing great. Yeah, Activision's doing real well. Yeah, and they bought him for almost six billion dollars. Yes. So now, what's your knee jerk? What, what do knee you jerk think? reaction? Um, I think it's a smart move. For you do. I think it's so a good. You're move in the minority. Them. Most of the criticism has been against that. So this is why I think it's a good a good idea. Is Activision has never solved the mobile thing for themselves. Like, they have not done a good job on with mobile. You know, the only thing they've had a huge hit with is Hearthstone. But in terms of, like, broad mobile appeal, it hasn't happened yet. I feel like Hearthstone is not a blip on the radar. It's not a blip on the radar, but it's one title, and that's the issue. King, granted, has Candy Crush. They have a number of other titles. These are not, quote, good games. They're I've not. heard estimates as much as $3 million to as how much Candy Crush makes a day. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, the last the official estimate that I heard, the official like numbers that were reported was about one and a half million. That was like a year and a half ago. So okay. those are old numbers. So and and that's not the only game that's making money. Now the thing about all these games is that they're super, super low um overhead to just maintain. They exist and they just make money. You don't need to staff them. You don't need to constantly create new content. When you do need to create new content, it's like a dude in a room setting up some fruit that fall. Like, it's literally not work. I don't think you should downplay it that much. It's, But compare but the, that to, like, making a level in, like, a 3D world. Or to c- compare that to, like, releasing a, a patch to The Witcher. Right, exactly. It's much less work. And um, it's this broader appeal thing. What Activision is doing is essentially... Tr- they're trying to corner every area of the games industry. Yeah, you're. I'm sorry, just to interject real quick. Yeah. The eighteen dollar per share uh, proposed purchase price does represent a twenty percent premium over King's closing price on October third. That's what I was saying. Yeah. So, Which is, but it is still four dollars and fifty cents per share lower than its IPO. That's right. Where I definitely. Was and I think that was the issue that they were having was that King, as its own company, is so uh, sustained by these big spikes, these big successes that they have. That in those dips, that's where you see the share price dropping. Mm. But when Activision comes in, Activision has these big properties that they can sort of rely on and say, okay, these are going to constantly make money. And you have this underlayer of all these mobile games. And they might not all be huge monster hits, but they're all making t- like guaranteed profit. Yeah. So I think it's a very conservative, safe move, which is ironic for such a big deal. Um, it would take a major shift in the mobile game space to... Uh, make this like a really bad investment because right it now would, it's because smart the trajectory at which it is pointing which is traveling yeah would say even in a short to 
medium length of time, like this is a smart move. Totally, 100%. And then if you want to get into like the numbers too of like how Activision is actually paying for this, Mm -hmm. it's not as much out, it's not like six billion out of their pocket. Right. Um, A lot of it is coming from like offshore stuff. Yeah. Because it is an international acquisition. King is Irish, I want to say. I feel like King is based in Ireland. I don't know where they're based. Uh, let's look this up real quick. I believe, and again, if you're listening to Beastcast N404, a little bit of overlap here, but King Digital is N. Is it Irish? King oh. Digital. Let's find out their Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, they are not an American company. They are based in Dublin. Dublin, Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they have a, an office in Sweden as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it's a good move for Activision. I realize I'm a little in the minority, but it's it's not like a super... It's not like when Activision brought, bought Blizzard and it was like, oh, of course, Blizzard's this monster crazy company yeah. that's on the upswing for the last 15 years. Of course, they're going to buy them. It's, again, kind of crazy when you're talking about a $6 billion acquisition, but it's a very steady, conservative, good investment for Activision because they're just like making a baseline and saying, okay, this is our mobile solution, and it's just going to constantly make money for the next five years. Or- for as little amount of effort it takes to update something like Candy Crush, they still have roughly 1,400 employees. Yeah. Which is a lot. Sure. It's a lot of people. Activision might cut some of those people. So, yeah, for sure. That's probably uh, almost guaranteed. Uh, so, so yeah, some of the money's coming from offshore, uh, because we were talking about like if they were to bring that money to the U.S., they'd have to pay taxes on yep. that. So you got to look at it as like, a, a deal in that regard and then the rest of it i believe is a loan from like banks from yeah like bank of america and, and freaking goldman sachs yeah pretty crazy who's well, is, isn't that weird mm, is that weird i guess i mean activision again stable company monster pub, game publisher i wouldn't mind giving them a loan and getting some money back in the end so if you really want to know just what the freak king digital makes like what what mobile games they're responsible for. Yep. On iOS, they've got 11 games, um, and these pretty much overlap one-to-one with the Android offerings. Bubble Witch Saga. Yep. Bubble Witch Saga 2. The Return. Candy Crush. Yep. Candy Crush Soda Saga. Yep. What, the f- what is... So- what? You play the Soda Saga? I don't know. I mean, I've played them just to like look at them, but... Not regularly. They're all saga. Diamond Digger. Yeah. Saga. Farm Hero Saga. Papa Bear Saga. Yep. Pet Rescue Saga. So when you type in saga, it comes up with all their games. But that's... All right. There's other games that have saga in it. Pyramid Solitaire Saga. And then let's not forget Scrubby Dubby Saga. (laughs) And then Alpha Betty Saga. I've only heard of uh, Candy Crush. Yeah. Which just prints money, apparently. Yes. I mean, they all make a lot of money. They so, all they all do well. So right. So if you can if you can detach yourself from the fact that this is an acquisition for the game in the mobile space, let's look at like. I, so I have a thing where like I I put a stigma on these types of games okay. because they're freemium games. Sure. And they are essentially, uh, you know, they they kind of leak money a little bit from their their. Uh, Navarro yesterday put it, uh, he called them like cash extraction modules. I understand. Right? Sure. Their end goal is to, it's like those coin, like when you're in the arcade and they have that coin pusher thing. Right. It's like one of those. So now I'm glad you made that analogy because okay. those remind me a great deal of casinos. Sure. And, you know, you have a lot of controversy lately with DraftKings and FanDuel. And I'm not saying Candy Crush Saga is in the same category. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like, these are ga- these are things designed to make you spend money that maybe you would not be willing to going in. Now I'm not now nothing shady happens. There's never a point in the game right. where it's like stealing your credit card sure. and you're unknowingly giving it money. Yeah. But they do sort of know how to operate along the lines of like, oh, you like that, didn't you? Right. Well, you like how that made you feel, didn't you? Well, sure. guess what? First one's free. <laughs> next one's five dollars. But the thing to keep in mind is like you. Unlike DraftKings and stuff like that, there's not a um, there's not a, a potential to win money, which makes it a big difference. Like there's a big legal. It's not and, gambling, and it's not gambling. So that's where I would say it's not really a casino. It's just like feed me fun and feelings, right? 
essentially which is, which which is, is like, like almost like worse <laughs> and it's weird because i think people in the games industry are like so aware of it and what they're doing that you're sort of it like doesn't really work like i don't really pay for like freemium stuff in those games right neither do i and i want to i want to know who those people are i like, think because i don't know any sure. of those people and there's enough of them that that candy oh, yeah. crush is pulling in three million dollars and not only it's not like oh i'm gonna buy a five dollars every three months it's like i'm gonna drop a hundred dollars on this game and it's the people that are like only playing candy crush only on their subway or whatever their commute or whenever they're playing it and they're like this is the only game i play i don't feel bad paying all this money and because of the way that it's drip fed they don't feel bad because it's like oh i'm not paying a hundred dollars a month i'm paying five dollars every week or whatever you know what i mean it's a filthy habit it's it's filthy but it's it's monetarily very effective <laughs> it's ingenious. you make a lot of money yeah and, and again like i'm not trying to say like now we have to stop freemium gaming i'm yeah. not playing that card because sure. there I are just, good ways to do it obviously hearthstone is a great example yeah freemium game you can i've played a lot of hearthstone without paying and it's you can still have fun you can't really be competitive in the like ranking system okay without paying i mean you have to grind and grind and grind and grind but you know there there have been people that have made um decks with only free cards and they actually did pretty well um so there are games that do it well but there are probably ways that they can monetize hearthstone even more and they're not i feel (laughs) i I just feel like I don't know. Maybe I need to like just come to terms and say, hey, or maybe we all collectively need to just be like, you know what? <coughs> you know what? The We need to put these guys in a different category. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what, what it do means. You, first of all, what do you mean by these guys? Let's let's break mobile this down. freemium game. OK. And what do you mean by category? I don't know. I, I sound like I want to like segregate them. Yes. So we're like, going to put them in camps. Yeah. Like that's fuck. Oh, that's not what I mean. <laughs> Oh my god, that's terrible. I I just I don't I just feel slimy talking about this kind of stuff. It just so the shame me, of it to me it feels like what the, the way I view the lottery, right? Like okay. I view the lottery as sure. a tax on the poor. Yes, like that's how I, I view understand. It. Well, I, I would say it's a tax on the stupid, but and that's kind of how I label Candy Crush, a tax I'm on the stupid. Sure. Yeah, I mean. And I'm not saying you're, you're getting a service, I'm, right? And that. I'm not calling. But I understand you, what you mean. The person who's listening to the show right a now, person. getting all defensive, and being like, "Well, I I give Candy Crush ten bucks a month, right? Screw you, Jeff, you you stupid idiot, right? I'm not trying to say that, and I don't think any less of you. You just want to put them in a camp. I get upset <laughs> with like the collective, you know, whole of the that. Sh- I think the bummer of it, especially for people that work in the games industry, is that you see all these indie developers with amazing ideas, being creative and stuff like that. And very rarely does that stuff bubble up into financial success on the App Store. Right. Because, like, even if you do something like, um, what the hell was that, like, MC Escher game? Oh, you mean... Uh, yeah, we oh can't even think God. of it, right? Uh, you know what I'm talking uh, about? Journey. Journey no. face forward. What the... Adventure? That's on my phone. King's Monument Valley. Monument Valley. Yeah. Which is, like, a really beautiful, stylized, fun to play. Yeah. Uh, artsy... Single player, yes. No ads, yes. Thing made a lot of money. Made a lot of money, yep. but like once you were done, right? That's it. Whereas you like could buy could, DLC, you could yeah. buy DLC. But my point is like it didn't. It wasn't this freemium thing, right? Where it's like it's the gift that keeps on giving. Right. Where like you keep having to pump quarters into the machine, and it's also there's a design element to those games, the freemium games that like Monument Valley would not work as a freemium game. Because the idea of like, oh, I get to play one more level is not enough of a, you know, a benefit for people. Right. It's not enough of an incentive. Maybe I'm totally wrong and I'm not looking at it proportionally. Maybe someone out there is thinking, look, listen to this dickhead. Yeah. Who's complaining about Candy Crush Saga and the willingness to like feed the drip machine and right. that whole thing. When this kid probably grew up going to arcades where like... Half of those games were designed to make you pop in a quarter to continue. Is it the same thing? Well, Was it the reason pinball was deemed illegal (laughs) for how many decades? Because it wasn't a game of skill? Until it was. Until it was proven to be a game of skill? I don't know. I think we're talking about some of the same stuff. Yeah, I I 
know what you mean. This is definitely not a skill thing, although there is skill involved. Like most of the games are built with the mindset of like, oh, we're going to make this just hard enough to make people pay. Look, there are ways to make money and uh, make money in freemium and not be like super slimy, super like demanding. Uh, Two Dots is a gr- an example of a great game that's freemium. It's on Android. It's on iOS. Um, that is excellent. Um, and you can pay money if you want to. And there are whales, obviously, in that game. But, you know, what can I say? I hear it's, you. It's, it, I, I get the frustration. Um it's just it there there needs to be more of a conversation about it, right? Is that I, what is that I what guess so. Away? I just don't know how I'm gonna convince someone that plays Candy Crush every day and that's the only game they play to not give them money. Oh, I'm not again, I'm not I don't wanna like stop people on the subway and be like, oh, ma'am, you need to stop what you're doing. <laughs> sure, here's it's this giving your kids game cancer. Like about it's not dating in Japan. Yeah, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to get it all out there. No, I know. Uh all right. So that got me thinking. Okay. And, and South Park a couple months ago or last year did a fantastic episode yeah. about freemium gaming. Yeah. And part of the thing was like, yeah, the whole thing with freemium gaming is that you pay not to wait. Right. right. So that got me thinking yesterday, sure. hey, it's the year 2038. Okay. And if you don't have the time to wait and see a movie, yeah. well, you can pay my service. And I mean, my that, service. 2038, that's now. 2138. 2138, it's now. What? Like, that exists right now. No, no, no. no. On video on demand. No, no, no. Okay, fine. No, no, no. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. You are. Okay. And you're ruining this it. This is going 100 years in the future. Yes. 120 years in the future. Yes, 120 years in okay. the future. My this service better be high tech. will let you yeah. have the memory of the movie without having to actually watch and see it. So this is like Eternal Sunshine, essentially. No, Eternal Sunshine the opposite is of Eternal a memory Sunshine. eraser. <laughs> We're giving you the memory. Okay. Right, it's the opposite of Lacuna. Why would you... Because now Lacuna. it doesn't. Now maybe it works for like books too. Okay, or, but that's I guess like oh, yeah, you're uploading information to your brain. Sure. I so you don't want to wait to see Mad Max Forty Eight. Yeah, I'm gonna let you have seen it for more than the price to go watch it yourself. I understand. At what point? Because do that's you, the freemium. No at what waiting point thing. do you get your ass to Mars? Is my question. Why does I have to go to? Why I have to go to Mars? Because it's Total Recall. Oh, <laughs> screw is, you! This is Total Recall. That's what Total Recall is. Have you never seen Total Recall? I have. What? That's not a, what it is. Total about. Recall. They implant the whole company. Total Recall is about they implant good memories into your brain, but oh, they right. nefariously yeah, right, right, use it to, to make him manipulate. realize that he's someone yeah. else. So uh, it's, it's essentially Total Recall. Oh my God! That we didn't. We didn't hmm, <laughs> did I just try and redo Total Recall? I think you did. <laughs> oh, but you get what I'm saying, right? Yes, like, I get what you're I'm, saying. I'm doing it on a much. I more don't know granular. why you would do movies, though. It seems like you could do much more fascinating no, 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 things. Because it can't be like experiences. Why? Uh, it can't. That, why? The company we have. This is the beta. We haven't figured out how to have. Isn't a movie watching a movie an experience? No. It is. It is. Okay. It, you going to the theater is right. an experience. So there you go. You've done it. But I'm not offering the movie going experience. <laughs> okay. I'm not offering the theater going experience. I'm offering just the the by the the open and shut instance okay. of that film from start to finish. You you your brain sure. will then re- have that memory of the film. Nothing else. You won't be able to. If think you got back to where you seats, saw it. You won't be able to think matter. back what you were wearing when you saw it. Okay. You will just have the memory of the film. So it's like reading the Wikipedia page. Kind of, but you can but you have you visual picture. memories. You can you like I remember you see a movie, you can you draw it back to it. You understand what you saw. You process the visualization of it. So it's like a two minute recap of an hour and a half long movie. It's like mental cliff notes. Mental cliff notes. That could exist like next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely possible. I don't think we need to jump 120 years in the future. Uh, you'd be surprised. I like the idea. I, and I know what you're saying. Is that it's cool, idea... right? Like I want to watch the whole season of Fargo. I want to see all Breaking right. Bad. I can sit on my ass and pay a, and pay sure. $20. Waste all watch, that time. Or I can give you 50 bucks and then I've experienced all of Breaking Bad. Without and I having can have to that conversation kill that amount you. of time. Right. I like the idea. Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem that advanced to me. You're crazy. Like, we, I'm not saying we won't get there. We'll you're, get there. It's essentially but, like a memory download thing that you're right, talking about. It's right. It, and it's the whole idea of like using our brains as like infinite hard drives. Right. Like, which like I'm sure we'll short get circuit, to. whatever. Input. Johnny Five reads the book in like a second. Right. And he's like, that was a good book. Right. But he, that's like an OCR thing. Like, he's using op, op, 
optical recognition right. and understanding it. Whereas like I'm saying, no, 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 no. It's just all that information right. gets implanted neurally. Like the Matrix. Sure. Where Where like, you know, Kung Kung, you know, Kung Fu. Yeah. Well, guess what? Now, you know, all seven seasons of Breaking Bad. <laughs> I like that. That's it's just the most worthless thing you can possibly do with because this technology. Because you can't have it be anything else. Why? Because it's too dangerous. Yeah, but you know people would. They're like, oh, we hacked that. Because that's... You know, ba- Bacalar's legacy, it's that company. It's literally the plot of Total Recall. Because I in Total Recall, I understand. That it starts as an inane. I get you go it. on a vacation. Right. I get it. But not really. I get it. It's more like Vanilla Sky in a weird way, too. I've never seen that. Vanilla Sky is like, you when you die, you get like transported into like a vacation. Okay. And you think you're on vacation forever. Sure. Like they take your soul. Yeah. Excuse me. And do that. Pretty good. But I'm... Yeah. This is fun. <laughs> Isn't this fun? <laughs> fun to talk about that. I, I, I think it's an interesting concept and I like the idea of boiling down the use of time. Like this all this time that you're wasting doing these things that you enjoy, but it's just a lot of time that you're wasting. So why not pay a premium to not spend so much time? Right. And that's my rules, right? Like you couldn't do it for a video game because video games are interactive in those experiences. Why couldn't you do you it? You could do it for like the story of a video game. Okay. You could do it for like only the cutscenes. Sure. But like for me, I think the cool thing, the, the cool rule with this is like, no, no, no. It's only for content that's consumable like a TV book. show, movie. I don't know if you could do a book. Why? Because a book is... Book is interpreted differently by everyone because you're just reading and you're the words. Yeah, are, but if you're getting, let's say, a visual picture of no, the movie, now no, yeah, right, what? yeah. So you're getting a visual picture of all the letters on the page. It doesn't work like that. When I think back to a book, like when you think back to a book you've read, do you think back to what the words look like <laughs> yeah, on the really paper? Really good font <laughs> in Harry Potter four. <laughs> all right, I'm glad we had that conversation. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, more four hundred four. Hey, it's time to talk about SoftLayer, clouds, and SoftLayer. Woo! That's all you got. I'm excited. Why? Because clouds confuse me, and I hope that there's a company that could explain them to me. I don't think SoftLayer is going to uh, clear the air. <laughs> See what oh I did there? Oh, my God. They're not going to explain clouds to you. They're just going to do a badass, bang-up job at providing you clouds built for scale. Awesome. For your business and all your computational applications and your workloads, uh, SoftLayer's got you covered. They're an IBM company, and they use IBM, that is, SoftLayer's cloud infrastructure for all their foundation in, in the cloud. All right? That's great. That's so, awesome. All kidding aside, if, if cloud infrastructure is something you're interested in as a listener of our show, you can get $500 off any of their services by going to softlayer.com slash podcast. That could be bare metal servers, virtual servers, storage, networking, security services, all of that. Five hundred dollars off. Go to cloud. No, there's not. Don't go to cloud. Go to softlayer.com <laughs> slash podcast. Tell them the four hundred four sent you, and you get five hundred dollars off. Hey, welcome back to the four hundred four show. Uh, we do not do drugs on this show. Nope. But. Not you, on the show. You may have thought <laughs> something was involved in that last conversation, uh, which leads us to our next topic. Does it? The great state of Ohio. Oh, boy. And what they didn't do. Yeah. So so I, we don't talk too much about pot on the show. No. I'm sorry. We we reference it a bunch. Occasionally. Uh, don't do drugs is number one. Yeah. Number two. It's kind of shocking to me, and this is just like a one-off thing. We can move on quickly. It's a little shocking to me that Ohio um, rejected the recreational pot. Do you know how close the vote was? I do not. Because it it surprises me in general just because there's so much benefit for the states. Like, that's what I don't understand. I believe I read something recently that said Colorado officially made more money off taxing pot than alcohol yeah that might so be like true. once you read stuff like that yeah you kind of go huh the only thing i can think of is if it de- sort of depends on how powerful the police unions are because you take pot off the market and the cops get a lot less to do and that might be an issue i'm you know that's sort of like a very simplistic way to look at it but i, I think do it know is. I and do i think know- the point i think the whole point of getting that kind of legislation passed yeah. is to avoid them having to deal with the pot so they could work on other stuff yeah so you can have bigger but i think their fry. concern was that they would get less funding if they don't like if you're in the middle of nowhere ohio and you don't have a cartel down the street and all you have is a bunch of kids that deal with pot every once in a while 
now you don't have that anymore and maybe you'll get less funding and maybe they'll cut back the cops i don't know so, i don't know but ohio so ohio thing. refusing to legalize marijuana as shocking as it is and you know ohio is is, is ohio historically a, a red or a blue state i feel like maybe uh, it's, 50, a, it's a swing 50, 50, 50, it's a swing, swing state swing state all right so they, maybe they get a pass i mean let's be honest louisiana is probably never going to legalize pot it'll have to be a federal thing which uh, I think Bernie Sanders just put forth to make it uh, to ban federal legal uh, federal criminality of pot. Right. Well, that's always up for a conversation. Uh, either way you slice it, in 2016, the presidential election year, 10 states are going to probably bring that before voters, including Nevada, mm-hmm. California, Massachusetts, Michigan, Arizona, Vermont, Maine, Florida, Missouri. I'm sorry, Missouri and Rhode Island. So there's 10 more states that are going to have their chance to not look like total jackasses. I feel like someone's just got to make a stand federally and be like, yep, we're going to do it. Or no, we're not going to do it. I don't want to get this into too much of a political thing. But like if I'm a strategic Republican uh, politician helping out one of these guys that, that might get the nomination, I go, look. There's a bunch of things that we disagree with that the vast majority of the company right. are in favor of. Yeah. Gay marriage, which is... Right. I mean, you can't it's fight done. that fight anymore, right? <laughs> and then legalizing pot. And birth control. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you want to look like the good guy? Right. You want to you wanna get people who would never even consider you? That's just what I'm saying. Well, that was the plot. That's of, a, and that's low-hanging That was the last season it. of The West Wing was that plot. Was oh, that really? You had a moderate Republican that was like pro a bunch of stuff that yeah. like most people are pro right it's just something to think about you know think about it politicians think about it no one's ever died from overdosing on pot think about that i yeah it's it is people do need to be careful though because you have all these dispensaries opening up people need to be careful with what with how I mean, much you can't overdose and like die but you can overdose and, and like really lose it lose it of course like really do some damage and and driving while really out Should of it is be not illegal. a good idea, right? One hundred percent. And it is illegal, right? Um, but you uh, just need to be careful. And I think, yeah, yeah, the concern is that you have all these dispensaries popping up, and they sort of have. It's not like uh, alcohol where people sort of understand for the most part. This is going to get me drunk. I know how much I'm going to drink. That's going to get me drunk. One drink an hour, whatever it is. Um, with weed, especially with like a brownie, or, it's way tougher to understand. You just don't know what yeah. the conden- uh, the uh, consistency is, how much is in there, etc. So yeah, you got to be careful. At least get marijuana off the schedule one. Yeah, it's it's crazy. <sighs> you know what else is on schedule one? What heroin? That was a brand name, actually, for uh, painkiller. Heroin. Yeah. Is sure. right. Yeah. They have Vicodin. Uh, schedule two that's below pot vikes they call them on the street vikes greenies we're greenies in this acid yeah same category as marijuana ecstasy yeah you ever see what that shit does to kids no good uh all right we're gonna get rid of the pot stuff this is an amazing uh discovery this cash that uh Russ found last week that we did not have time to because we were with jordan hoffman who by the way was a, excellent a delight gentleman. A delight. A, a I've known him many delight. years. Interesting factoid about Jordan Hoffman. Used to be a New York City tour guide, so knows all these crazy facts about New York City history. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. Was he like the guy on the bus? He was the guy on the bus. Hey, so you, you look to your right, there's uh, City Hall. Yeah. Underneath that is Canal <laughs> Street because there's a canal under there. There you go. That's cool. So. Uh, this, okay, totally different subject. Um, or at least speaking totally of the past. Yeah. Um. So, Russ, you unearthed yeah. a thread from Mac Forums, which is a very f- highly frequented Mac uh, f- enthusiast website. Yes. And you pulled up a thread they had in their forums from October 23rd, 2001. Yep. Do you know what happened on that date? Uh, I don't know. I can't even believe the this Yanks, was a website right. in 2001. The Yankees and the Diamondbacks were duking it out in the World Series. And? Uh, I don't know. It was a month after 9-11. <laughs> oh, right. That's, that's mm, about it. Okay. But something very big did happen that day. And that was the official reveal of a new Apple device called the iPod. So this is crazy. This is like a time capsule from yep. uh, 14 years ago, almost to the day, of this like 
thread where people are like, what is this? Really bizarre. So, so now why'd you put it in here? What, I put know? it in here. There's some really interesting commentary commentary from people that didn't know anything. I mean, the, the whole thread is just called Apple's new thing and then iPod in parenthesis. And people are saying like, I poop, I cry. I was hoping for something more. Great. Just the world, what the world needs. Another freaking MP3 player. Go, Steve. Where's the Newton? <laughs> oh, wow. Where are you barking up the wrong tree? Uh, what about like $400 for an MP3 player? I mean, that's still not unreasonable. That's like uh, still ridiculous. All you wussies waiting for a Newton replacement. I told you it was a media player charged by Firewire. <laughs> <laughs> God, that sounds oh, crazy. Man. I love these old threads. They just like, it's such a relic of another time. 20 gigs. Yeah, that. they're all freaking out about the $400 price tag. And they're talking also about like the competition, right? So there are already two products similar to this on the market. The Nomad Jukebox. Yep. I don't remember that thing. And then the Arcos Jukebox. This is good. This guy Traveler says, we live in the year 2001, not 6,000... Not 6,000 years from now when ridiculously awesome technology will exist. No other MP3 player has a hard drive like this. Five gigs. Shit, yeah. <laughs> A Rio about the same size has 64 megs. I mean, that is really telling. Yeah, that's, that's the, the thing. crazy. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, how much more memory this thing had. And and if you remember, in hindsight's 2020, but if you remember when that when the iPod debuted, I remember yeah. my buddy Bobby got one. Yeah, like, I think he had the first one, and I couldn't under Bobby it was, D. It was thick. It was a oh yeah, thick it was, thing. It I like, mean, it was it was like almost like a a deck and a half of cards. Yeah, I would say it, it's about a deck of cards. It in was. Terms of I think it's bigger, dude. Maybe bigger. It was like a mini VHS tape. <laughs> uh, that thing had so much more memory than anything else. Yeah. And it, it, it was so much that you didn't, like, I was like, what am I going to do with five gigs? That's an outrageous amount of space. Obviously now, not so much, yeah. but, and and it like looked good. Like all the other MP3 players kind of looked it, goofy. But it was, yeah, it was super sexy. It had, did it have the touch yet or was it just buttons? No, it was just hard buttons. It had a that good first screen. Good it had screen. that two color screen or one color screen. Here's a really good post. Number 41 from Beholder of Truth. You were all a bunch of imbecile, imbecile, <laughs> crybabies. Oh my god! I bet you haven't this even. This is all in bold. Yeah, it's all yeah. in bold. I bet you haven't even gone over the specs, and all you can do is whine and cry because you didn't get a Newton. Get a life. As I'm about to just, you know, diarrhea at why I'm such an Apple fanboy. I bet all you do is troll Mac BBSs criticizing Apple and how they can never meet your stupid way out of this world expectations. New line, all caps. This thing is amazing. <laughs> it's not just another MP3 player. It's a breakthrough MP3 player. Let's go over this. Number one, five gigabyte ultra slim hard drive. All in a tiny and beautiful oh, enclosure the size of a deck of cards. <laughs> There's so many. Does any MP3 player out there have anything like that? I don't think so. Only huge crap ass ones like the No Man <laughs> Jukebox. I mean, do you this, think this was Steve Jobs doing this? <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> this thing fits in your palm or in your pocket. And then the next one, all caps, Firewire! Exclamation <laughs> point. Steve. <laughs> Like Steve in the factory in China doing this. Steve transmitted one gigabyte of data onto the device in about two minutes. One gigabyte. Does any MP3 player out there do this? Didn't think so. You have to wait five hours on your Nomad to load up. 20 minute anti-skip <laughs> okay. protection. I mean, it goes on. It does go on. Doubles as a storage it device. 10 hour battery. Auto sync. Apple's beautiful and intuitive. I mean... Say what you will. I mean, this guy was right insofar as it was a pretty groundbreaking thing. He's very excited about it. Is he? Yeah, you a think little he was bit. Excited? I think a little excited. The whole post, and it's like 500 words. The whole post is in bold. It's yeah. He was very like, serious. Which is like when people do that on message boards, you're like, well, who's this I guy? Got enough already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's funny. I I want to. If anyone knows of other um, forum threads from like big days in tech. Uh, post it in the in the subreddit or uh, email us because we definitely it's kind of fun looking at these old threads. <laughs> if if we can match half of the awesomeness of this one, yeah, it's pretty great. I would love to do it. All right, uh, we're stealing this next topic from r slash shower thoughts. If you've never been to reddit dot com slash r slash shower thoughts, it's a bastion of weird crap that people think out of nowhere, and I I would hope some of them actually do come from the shower. I have weird thoughts in the shower. You have shower. moments of clarity in there? Yeah, when I'm fighting mm -hmm. fake insects. 
Oh, right. <laughs> when you're not hallucinating. Uh, this is pretty funny. This came uh, about 12 hours ago from the time we were recording this. The The title is Batman is a... So all of these share with thoughts are just like simple one sentence ideas that yes. are just like, whoa. Yeah. You know? Batman is a one percenter beating up the mentally ill. Criminally insane. Yeah. I think criminally insane is like the better way to say it. I mean, that is... But he is a one percenter. There's no doubt about that. Definitely a one percenter. And he does beat he, up people. He does give back. He does give back. And maybe he doesn't just beat up the mentally ill, even though. I, or maybe he doesn't. He definitely. I, all of his villains are pretty sick in the head, right? They're not. Are they? They're not well. Is there like one Batman villain that's like a kingpin equivalent that's just like, oh, I just want to do crime? I would say maybe crime. Penguin. Like Penguin doesn't seem to be. He's got all a, that a parents nutty. thing. He's the thing with his parents. He's got though. abandonment issues. Uh, what about? Um, yeah, I guess Calendar um, Man. <laughs> he's definitely crazy. <laughs> he's obsessed with Calendar. Yes, uh, F- Mister Freeze. Yeah, maybe not Mister. Upset Freeze. about his wife. God, everyone's so emo in the yeah, Batman. Yeah, they've world. all got some little baggage they got to deal with. Uh, there I was, guess no. Tr- oh, who? what about Falcone? Falcone is probably not mentally ill. Right, the crime boss. Crime boss. Falcone. Falcone. Is that his name or is it Falcone? I mean, who, it doesn't Falcone. Matter. Right. Like that. He seems to be stable enough. Yeah, because his only priority is just like committing crime and making money. Is that is Falcone canon or Falcone? Is he yeah, canon? Yeah, he's like a character in the yeah? world. Yeah. He's a guy? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So I, I think he's the only one, but that's true. I, I mean, think that's Two-Face probably true. Two-Face is clearly a schizo. What about like... Harley Quinn. Superman is everyone he fights crazy. They're mostly like aliens. Lex so Luthor's like say. mad with power. Yeah, but I wouldn't say he's, he's mentally probably, ill. He's not, yeah. Unless you like want to count like megalomaniacal as mental illness. Mental that, illness. And that's more of just like a, th- uh, I don't know if that's in the DM5 or D- whatever, the DSM5. <laughs> I don't know if that's in there. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, Batman's trying to do the fight the good fight, but it's true that he does have some. He just wants to convince them that what they're doing is wrong and they're they're not having it. Joker's like, nah, I'm gonna do what I want. The 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 comic book now, the new fifty two, yeah. that one. Oh right, what is it? The deal. Jim Gordon is now Batman. Yeah, so did you hear about that? I guess that's kind of a spoiler, but oh, if you sorry. want eh, it's fine. If you're not reading that, if you're behind, to fast forward a minute. Uh in that storyline right now, Jim so Bruce Wayne dies. Yeah. So Batman dies. Has he died with, before? Uh, I don't know. Will he die? It's got to be another time. He's fighting time. Joker sure. after this thing called Endgame is like the arc, I think okay. they called it. And him and the Joker fall like underneath Gotham near like the Lazarus pits. Okay. And they're fighting and they both kill each other. They both die. Okay. In like an ultra punch? Where yeah, they both it was like they both the KO. <laughs> okay. And they're done. <laughs> um, And then Jim Gordon yeah. is like, we got to keep... We gotta keep the keep spirit of Batman alive. Sure. So then Batman becomes this like government contracted entity. Okay. Where Batman wears like a suit and Batman just stands for something. Okay. Jim Gordon gets fit, gets buff, yeah, and assumes the suit. And now he's Batman. He's got like a team of people that help him out. He's still got the mustache. Yeah. Okay. He's like shaved his head. Cool. But new twist. Bruce Wayne's back? Obviously, because he got killed by the Lazarus pit. What exactly. Are, of course. But with no memory of being Batman. Oh, no. So what does he remember? He just... Rem- he, I don't know what he remembers. It's... it's, it's is it's he kinda, like a 10-year-old boy again? No, no, no. He's like, a, he's, he's like an older dude, but he just doesn't remember anything. And like, he's hanging out with this girl, and she's trying to convince him. He, he's back at Wayne Manor, and he understands his legacy, but he doesn't remember the Batman side. Okay. And I feel like what they're going to do is they're, they're like going to like fake kill his parents in front of him <laughs> again or something. <laughs> like that's the only uh, way to do it. That would be good. Yeah, it's cool. Do you so, have to cast for that? or I don't know. You I guess get so. the pearls. Yeah, you got to really make do it some convincing. some work. But that's where that, that, uh, that comic is headed right now. That's in Crime name. Alley. Was that the official name of that street was Crime Alley? I think that was the nickname they gave it. Oh, okay. Well, because he goes, because in, um, yeah, because there's a, an issue where they're talking about it again, Crime Alley. Mm. Yeah. Um. All right. So that's that. We're going to take one more break. When we come back, we'll finish things up with uh, this and that. <laughs> Various things. With uh, some monkeys. Hey. With some tech stuff. Whoa. 
and the Product Hunt Game of the Week. Stay tuned. More 404 right after this. Hey, do you need a website? I do. My I've had that construction gif playing for about 15 years now. You can't make that joke again, Russ. Did I make that joke? <laughs> I feel like you've done that before. It does sound like the sort of joke I would make. Uh, so if you are interested in making a website for yourself, for your brand, for your company, any of those things, consider... Squarespace. Squarespace uh, offers a free trial, two weeks. You can try it out, see how you like it. It takes care of all the confusing stuff of web design. No HTML needed, no coding required. It doesn't matter how professionally uh, skilled you are. Even if you don't have that professionally gifted uh, uh, creative mind, that's where I think Squarespace offers the best value because most people have terrible eyes for creativity and design. Very true. All right. I don't care how great of a professional, you know, insert your profession there you are. It doesn't mean you know how to make a website. True. So Squarespace is going to take care of that for you. When you go to Squarespace and you're obviously going to, uh, and you're going to sign up for that free trial, when you're ready to buy, when you're ready to get down and dirty with the people at Squarespace, make sure you use the offer code CNET, that's C-N-E-T, and you're going to get 10% off your first purchase. Show your support for us by... Getting into business with Squarespace. Yeah, yeah. Again, squarespace.com. When you're ready, the trial's up, and you're ready to lay down some cash and pay for their fine service, make sure you use uh, code CNET. And that helps out the 404 show. We thank Squarespace so much for sponsoring the podcast. Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm loving this one today, man. Rocking and rolling. Feeling good. You called it. I. I was skeptical, but we're making it happen. You know, when they think Bacalar, they think clutch. They do. They think delivering on his promise. Yeah, right? They do. They do exactly that. Uh, so we did a shower thought. Now we're going to talk about something about, uh, uh, this is like a technical thing. Yeah. So this is weird. So w- whenever I watch TV, um, and they always have the TV on here at the CBS office, and they're always playing, obviously, CBS. Right. During the day, CBS runs, uh, well, they do their prices right, they do their let's yep. make a deal, they do their news, but then they do soap operas. Yes. And I always wanted to know, why does it seem like soap operas have better picture quality, mm-hmm. better HD definition picture right. than perhaps regular TV programming. And what is all that? Sure. And, and they have this glow about right. them. Better is obviously subjective, but it, it looks weirdly crisper, right? Yeah, like I don't... like Sharper wh- and like more bright. So I've always wondered like just what the hell's going on. Yeah. So there was a great uh, post about this on the Explain Like a Five uh, subreddit. We're obviously pulling from Reddit quite a bit today, but that's cool. They make good content. Um, and the post uh, was essentially why do soap operas seem... Like, they have a higher definition picture than regular TV programming. And this guy, SS6Sam6, is his username, apparently, um, says says this. He says, soap opera lighting is the major reason the shows look the way they do. Backlighting, part of the three-point lighting setup often used in television production, helps lift actors out of the background. So it makes them more dimensional. Right. Uh, this is especially useful for, for productions that are shot on lower quality medium or in small interior sets, which soaps often are. So essentially, by lighting them a certain way, it's ca- uh, taking away the backgrounds, which are kind of shoddy and, like, crappy. Like, they could do this on, like, SNL. Right. And where, they pro- and they do, essentially. Like, yeah. You know, it's using similar lighting techniques. Um, actors in the foreground often wind up being very noticeably backlit, something that doesn't often happen with shows on la- uh, with larger sets or shows that are recorded on film. Right, and the video stuff changes things too. I, I I don't think a lot of shows are shot on film anymore. Yeah. But that that used to be a thing. This is also interesting. So show, uh, soaps and other low budget shows also look off because they're more evenly lit across the entire set because it allows them to shoot from multiple cameras at once. So ordinarily when you're like a, shooting a Breaking Bad, there's just one camera and you have to do it multiple times. But with soaps and obviously like three camera sitcoms like Friends and whatever, mm-hmm. um, they are using multiple cameras at once so they don't have to like constantly redo stuff so they can get it done really quick. So the whole set needs to be lit, not just the part where the uh, camera is pointing at the moment. Right. So it's interesting. I, I never thought about that, but very fascinating. Wonderful world of lighting for TV. That is not an easy job. I mean, it is tough to light 
and you know, even the the freaking videos we do here in the studio next yeah. door. But you got you've got like thirty five lights on a grid, sure, and it it's still not good enough. Like you still got to maneuver and MacGyver stuff and and make stuff work. Yeah, but you got to imagine for like a soap opera, opera they have very consistent sets, of course, and and essentially, oh, this is a two person scene in such and such's apartment, and this evil twin is going to come through the door. <laughs> And this is our lighting setup for it. And it's got to be pretty consistent, right? Obviously, they may need to make changes. It's not easy work. But I don't know that they're doing a ton of like, okay, let's try to figure this out every scene, you know? Right. I don't know how they... The sh- the amount of shooting that they do for like Law & Order on the streets blows me away because there's so much logistics required for that. It's like crazy to me. Yeah. You just walk outside and it's Law & Order. I think... SVU, chilling out. Solid there's rate. been a lot of really awesome developments in lighting for... Uh, production. Yeah, there's all those like hanging Chinese lantern looking ones. They're like bloom lighting. Things really? Where like oh, just for spa- lighting where space. Where they just light space real well. They're like almost like hot air balloons. Yeah. That are like it's really a- impressive stuff. And they and they eat they light evenly. And yeah, I mean there's just really awesome stuff out there. And I guess the lenses have gotten better. So yeah, you I mean like you don't light. and and believe it or not, like a lot of stuff they don't always use lights anymore. Really? Yeah, like not everything is shot with lights. I know Kubrick shot one of his movies with just candle light, right? I don't know. I think he did. But that's pretty impressive. I'm not saying you know lighting is going away. I'm just saying like with a lot of really awesome you know low light detection with cameras and stuff yeah. like that, like don't no need lighting. to have this amazing like special lighting. Stuff. Right. It's it's start like you can choose to do it. I'm not saying it's got it can be done with just your iPhone. Sure. But it's not necessarily, you know, something you always have to Putting have. Putting all those gaffers out of the job. Well, they'll be okay. Poor gaffers. They'll figure it out. Um, all right. Uh, let's go to uh, this story about the Boston Garden. And there's this, like, myth about the Boston Garden monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of this. I need you to tell I didn't, me. I didn't hear about this until very recently. I need you to tell me just what the hell the Boston uh, Boston market, I almost said. The Boston Garden monkey is... Is yeah. he real? What is he? What does he represent? And why are we talking about so this? So the Boston Garden, uh, first of all, let me say weird animal facts. Done. Oh, right. Weird animal <laughs> facts. Right. Uh, the Boston Garden was the old Boston arena. Uh, it's where the Celtics played. Uh, probably other sports teams played there, too. Who? The Bruins, maybe? There you go. Okay. Did they play there as well? Great. Hockey. Hockey. Uh, so that garden, uh, it closed 20 years ago, actually, back in September, was the anniversary of when it closed. But there was this rumor going around when they um, were dismantling it. So they were taking it apart 20 years ago. And the rumor was uh, that the construction workers found a mummified monkey what? in the rafters of the building. The rafters? They were in. <laughs> yeah. Like that's above it. Yeah. So it was, it was above it in the upper section. Construction uh, workers encountered something uh, peculiar in the garden about halfway through the building's demolition. Uh, Workers found the remains of a monkey in the rafters Thursday, and they were even moved to pause for a moment of silence, hard hats in hand. So this happened. Um, No one, like, people were, like, skeptical of whether they actually found the monkey. Um, People were trying to figure out what it could have been. So, like, in 1998... Uh, they were speculating that Ringling Brothers, when it came to the Boston Garden, uh, maybe there's a monkey that vanished. Um, Ringling Brothers denied that. They even looked to, apparently in the 1930s, there was a news story. Uh, here's the headline. Monkeys evade capture, hold own circus amid Boston Garden rafters. Oh, my God. This is back in the 1930s. Uh, and a bunch of monkeys escaped. Uh, and we're like causing a problem. Another headline: Monkey shines continue at garden. Bananas trap only two of the troop. <laughs> so they're using bananas to try to trap these monkeys in the 1930s. Unfortunately, they did some DNA testing, and it turns out the monkey that they found, the mummified monkey, was not um, was not one of these monkeys. Okay, so they they went to the they went to the extent of DNA testing. This yes. Thing. So it's. Freaking gross. It's weird. It's gross. What is it? What's what's going on? So they found they really did find a monkey. Right. And what's even weirder is that the guy, one of the guys who was the um senior vice president of Morse D- a Diesel, which I guess was uh in charge of the demolition, totally denied this actually happening. So we have the construction workers saying, We found this monkey. We even said photos. A pr- prayer we for took it. photos, yeah. Well, at this point there were no photos. They hadn't surfaced yet. Right. 
Uh, and the guy's like, absolutely not. I was in charge of the project. And believe me, I would have known. It's an urban legend. There were pigeons. There were rats. There were no monkeys. <laughs> What, so, like, and what's the like? Why not admit that there was a monkey? Like, why sweep well, that well, under the rug? So we're we're gonna find out in a second. So so that's how the story ends. This Boston uh, Boston dot com story, which uh, came out in September, Apparently, turns out it wasn't a out, monkey. Uh, so this is a follow up story from Boston dot com um, that was published actually just uh, I think a day ago. Yeah, it was yesterday. And I'm sorry, it's today. This it's early this yeah, morning. Earlier this morning, and this is from the construction workers, along with photos of them finding the monkey and yeah, posing with it around the stadium, including one picture of the monkey on the Fleet Center sign, which was the stadium that was going to replace which, the Boston Garden. It upsets me that they were like <laughs> throwing this carcass around. They even talk about the fact that like, why didn't the guy know the guy from Morse Diesel who was in charge of the construction? Mm. Why didn't he know? So they said, we hid it from Morse Diesel for a couple of days, and they came looking for it. We actually put it in an electrical panel where we parked our cars. We hid it in there. Oh, my God. So they're God. hiding the monkey because they were worried they were going to get in trouble or whatever. What? This is so weird. Really bizarre. But this is legit. Like, there was been speculation. There was a lot of proof and a lot of mum- a monkey mummy photos here leaning up again. They, like, posed it in various spots around the garden. <laughs> it's terrible that they posed it. It is sad. So, But they don't know where it's from. No, they still have no idea what the source of the monkey was. That I, I think it's gonna be a circus, right? My guess would be Ringling Brothers probably wouldn't admit to the fact that they lost the monkey because it might open them up to like litigation, right? So by who? I don't know. The Kong family, <laughs> <laughs> King and his uh, wife Penny. It's weird. It's a weird one, Russ. It's even this one. He's like t- taking a photo with a monkey in like a weird like wooden chair. Yeah, it's fu- it's it's a weird story. Maybe I'll link to this in the show notes. You know, it's a weird one. That's man. what you kind of get with. Weird I want to know. Facts. Yeah, I want to weird animal facts. Oh, you know, you never know how wh- how it's going to go. But I need to know where this guy came from. And was there any sort of like legend attached to him? Like, did he was he responsible for like a dearth of championships? Like well, the but the problem is they didn't find the monkey until it was being demolished. Gotcha. And also the Celtics did pretty well. Yeah. So, you know, who knows? Maybe, I, yeah. I guess the Bruins probably were pretty good too. For a while. I don't remember how the Bruins were in the yeah. 90s. Uh, but yeah, that's... If, so if if so if you know anything about the monkey, if it was your monkey, <laughs> it's okay. It's been 20 years. Statute of limitations is done. You can come forward and let so, us know. so weird. It's very odd. It's so weird. Poor monkey. What a story. What a story. Finally, we'll finish things up with the Product Hunt Game of the Week, Russ. What up? Uh, okay, Product Hunt Game of the Week um, is a game called The Room 3. Okay, so I usually, when you do these things, You're like, I've never heard of this I'm game. I'm like, it's okay, weird. great. This game will be Flavor of the Week for four <laughs> seconds, and then we'll move on with our lives. Yes. But I really like The Room. Okay. Because The Room uh, is a really cool sort of puzzle. I guess it's, what do you call it? Like a Puzzle kind of like a mist. interactive it's puzzle. It's like mist, but like less like obtuse and annoying. It's just like you got to open a box. Yeah. And you got to figure out. A you're ro- like moving levers and like holding down secret. It's like a puzzle box and you like hold down secret elements. And yeah. And slowly but surely you open this box and uh, each layer has like a new puzzle for you to solve. And it looks gorgeous. Um, and uh, yeah, the second one was great too. And, and this is the third entry in the room series. Now. I was excited up until a point where I was told I cannot play this game. That's true. Why can I not play this game? Because you are an Apple Newton. <laughs> uh, no, you're on an Android, and it's not on Android. Sorry. It, so, for the record, the Room One and Two are on Android. Yeah, but they, I don't think they launched on Android. No, so they had to wait until like three years from now. Because the to... the developer of the Room hates Android. Fireproof games. No, they don't hate Android. They just know where the money's at. Right. That's the thing. You release. And they probably got really good promotion in terms of App Store stuff. I'm sure. By being exclusive. How much is it? I don't know, actually. I don't really think about these things. Because I don't pay for games. (laughs) Is that (laughs) the answer? I I pay for games. No, I know you do. What? uh, How much is it? It's five bucks. Okay. I was going to say, that's the sweet spot. Four ninety nine, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't, like, and how many hours? Does anywhere ever say how many hours? The, um... Uh, no, I don't know how many hours, but the first game was, I would say, probably about two hours, maybe an hour and a half. Second game was a little bit longer than that. So I would say in that realm. So it's not going to last you forever, but I, you know, it's... Five, no, five, dude, five, if I get an afternoon 
Or yeah, like, it's like uh, Monument Valley. Like, yeah, I would say that's great. So check it out. The Room Three out on iOS, the App Store right now. Yep. Russ, Jeff, we did it. Did it. We uh, made it. We happen. reached the end of another fantastic week. You'll be gone next week. Yeah, I'm going to San Francisco. I don't know what we're gonna do. We Uh-oh. haven't figured it out. Don't have any amazing guests on. We're Just... not gonna do that. Uh, I don't. I'll try and figure something out. I think we were supposed to maybe have um, uh, Katie Linenthal back. Oh, you know her, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But don't worry, I'll communicate what we will do on the Reddit and the Twitters. So stay in touch that way. What is your Twitter account, Jeff? Uh, it is at Jeff Bacalar. Mm-hmm. And you're what? At Russ Frustick. You're, you're at Russ Frustick. Yes. Okay. So follow us. Yep. Stay in touch with the show. Reddit.com slash r slash the 404. You want to give us a phone call? Go for it. What's the I, phone number? I haven't had a good call, call in a month. 866-404-CNET. And uh, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Russ Frustick. This has been the 404 Show, High Tech, Low Brow. Also, don't worry, Jill Schlesinger is coming back at some point, I think December. You know her, right? Yep. You've been on with her, yeah? No. You, you've, she oh. hasn't been on with you here I yet? I don't think so. All right, we're, we're going to cross that bridge. Yeah. All right, thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time.